You know I'm never gonna miss a chance to get out the old FLIR camera. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Gigabyte. This is their UD Gold 1000 watt power supply. They did send me the sample, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some key tech specs on the backside so you can learn more about this power supply. You'll see front and center, it's 80 plus gold certified for its energy efficiency. And we have our 1000 watt capacity. You'll see specifically the model is the UD 1000 GM modular power supply with a nice breakout graphic here showing us all the different included cable options and connections with our tech specs down here at the bottom. Pay attention too, to your efficiency curve and your fan noise. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up we have your user guide and manual in multiple languages, walking you through everything you need to know about getting your power supply installed. Next you'll see we have a bag of screws, four screws to install the unit to our case. Then we have a lot of different power cords and cables. You'll see our main power cord and cable here from our wall outlet to the unit, and then everything else from the unit to our computer and build. Fully modular, so just pick and choose the cables that you need for your build. And then lastly, we have the power supply unit itself. Let's look at this in more detail. First up, you'll see the bottom of the power supply unit right here with the Gigabyte logo and branding, and you'll see our internal fan. Really like that design here, very industrial. Flip it over to the side, you'll see ultra durable gold 1000 gigabyte logo and branding. Flip it over to the back side, toggle on and off switch, and we have our power cord hook up there. You'll see some of the internals through the mesh. Here's a peek at the other side, so same thing, ultra durable gold 1000 gigabyte branding on it. Flip it over to the top, we have all of our product specs here. Additional info for you. And that leaves us to this side here where we have all of our cable hookup options clearly labeled for us. So motherboard, CPU, PCIe, you'll see any peripherals that we want to add here and then additional CPU, PCIe connectors as well. Please use original cables for installation. A nice friendly reminder there for us. Clearly labeled, nicely organized for us. Really like the look and aesthetic of this unit. And it's on the smaller side, which is great too, in regards to its form factor. Love to see that. Now let's go ahead, let's test it out. All right, so we have the power supply plugged in and powered on. You'll see the cables that we have set up here, motherboard, then a CPU and a GPU cable. We also have our SATA connector right there. So on this power meter, what we wanna see is blue. Blue is good. So first up, our 24 pin motherboard cable, that's coming in from down here. 5.1 to five, 11.9 to 12, 3.3 to three, uh, three point, or 11.9 to 12, five to five, and a PG score of 180. You wanna see that score be anywhere between 100 and 500 milliseconds. Next, let's move right along our GPU PCIe cable, 11.8 to 12, well within spec and range. CPU 11.9. So well within range. And then you'll see lastly our SATA cable here for any peripherals. That's gonna be 5.1 to 5, 11.9 to 12, and 3.3 to 3.3. So everything's checking out great here with our power meter. Now let's go ahead, let's get this installed. All right, our computer's been built. The power supply is installed. Let's check it out. All right, so looking at the build, we'll start with the GPU. You'll see we have our two PCIe cables coming up there, connecting to the adapter that we have with our RTX 3080. Moving up, you'll see our motherboard power connector cable right there. And then up at the very top, you'll see our two CPU power cables connected to our board. You might only have one depending on your board and build. Here's a look at the back side featuring the unit with the four included screws mounted to our case. We have our power coming into the unit and our toggle on and off switch. And then looking at everything from the back, you'll see our two CPU cables coming down and around right through there and up and in. And then we have our main motherboard cable right there going up and in. And then down under here, our two GPU cables go up into the GPU. But look at that. 
plenty of room. You'll see with this case, you get a feel for the size here. It doesn't even rest fully on the second leg, which is nice. So really small and compact, leaving us plenty of room to easily reach in there and connect more cables in the future or any additional accessories, fans, things we want to mount here. We have plenty of space thanks to that power supply. Currently our PC's plugged in, powered on, and at an idle, and I wanted to walk you through a couple of key power metrics here. First up, we're using right around 70 watts right now, and 0 0.606 kilowatt hours, and 122.6 volts and then you'll see 0.715 amps. Monitoring everything at idle, looking at our software here on this dashboard, you'll see all of those charts, real-time monitoring, everything looks good. You'll see that with our particular build, our 7700X is currently using about 24 watts at idle. Our RTX 3080 FE is currently using about 10 watts. Again, everything's just at idle right now, just powered on and just chilling and hanging out. Now let's go ahead, let's stress this power supply out under a full CPU and GPU load. Update on our power draw with everything being stressed out under a full load. You'll see currently we're using 540 watts, 0.67 kilowatt hours, 120.5 volts, and 4.563 amps. We're getting close to the 10 minute mark, fully stressing out our PSU. When it initially got under that load, you could hear the fan spin up for a minute. I believe it's still running, but we're hearing our exhaust fan and some other things versus the power supply fan. And initially we did have a slight coil whine, but that went away, which is nice. So if you're going to be able to hear this power supply, that's because every other part and component in your PC is silent. Even then, it'll be hard pressed to hear anything unless you have your computer right up here within earshot, but with your panel on, it's probably tucked out of the way under your desk table, things like that. You'll be hard pressed to really notice this power supply at all, whether it's just idling or under a full load. So currently our CPU consuming around 130 watts, GPU around 315 watts. All in, we're at about 550 watts for everything. This is a thousand watt power supply. So for this particular build, it's definitely overkill, but it gives us a lot of headroom in the future. If we want to upgrade our CPU, I want to add a bunch of hard drives, want to pop in a 4090 or another GPU like that. We have plenty of room with this power supply, which is always a good thing to have that extra future proofing. You know, I'm never going to miss a chance to get out the old FLIR camera. So let's take a look at our power cables here. The hottest one is going to be right at the GPU. You'll see what we're showing here, about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. But look at that hot spot on the GPU, over 160 right there. Got a lot of power and juice flowing over 300 watts to our GPU from the power supply. Motherboard cable, nice and cool right here. Take a look at those temps, right at around 90 degrees. Let's go see our CPU, definitely warmer there on the board. You'll see both cables around the 100. 105 degrees Fahrenheit for our CPU power. Back side of the unit, peeking in there, you'll see right around 100 degrees or so, up to maybe 110 at that hot spot through the mesh on the back. Nice and cool with the main power cable coming in. And very back, you'll see CPU cables, a little bit warm back here. We got both of them connected together, so that might be one of the reasons. And all that heat from the board on the back but around 90 degrees and it drops off as we get further down. And then you'll see our motherboard power cable here, nice and cool. And underneath, see some of the GPU there, nice and cool as well. Love the thermal cam. If you're curious about the side of the unit, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit right there on that back side. So after installing and using this power supply, let me share with you my final thoughts. Here's what you really need to know. I'm happy with this power supply overall compared to all the other name brands. This is the most competitive in regards 
to its cost. So really happy to see that this is the best budget buy out of name brand. Sure, if you look hard enough, you'll find a couple other power supplies that offer similar spec that cost a couple of bucks less, but they're from brands you've probably never heard of and you can't even pronounce. So really happy with this power supply and everything that they're giving us. The value is definitely there. Sure, I would knock it for not having ATX 3.0 or PCIe 5.0, but they make a nearly identical version of this power supply with those features if that's something you want.